Hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be going through the basics of After Effects and the basic functionality within After Effects. First of all, when you open up After Effects here, so, and I'll be going through this kind of quickly, just going through the basics and we'll get into some more advanced tutorials later. But right now, when you open up After Effects, you will get this splash screen almost with a, a, as you would with almost any Adobe product. Now to explain what these items are here, up at the top here you've got sync settings with Adobe Creative Cloud. If you use any Adobe product with the Creative Cloud, you're going to have these sync settings where if you do custom settings, you can sync them on your account. If you have a lo uh, an account login, you can sync your settings if you make customized settings to the Creative Cloud. And even if you are using somebody else's login, you can borrow settings from your uh, your own account if you're working on a different computer. And down here, of course, you've got the open recent items. If you had open, if you've had if you've had projects open recently, you can open open them up here. But right up here, where we've got some items to create a new composition and open a previous project if that's not showing up here. But the new composition. Let's describe quickly what a composition is. Composition. I'm going to hit new composition. It's going to bring up a new window asking me what type of composition I want to create. Now there's three major settings with any with any uh, video clip that you're going to be working with, and the three major settings are going to be resolution, pixel aspect ratio, and frame rate. These days, pixel aspect ratio are going to pretty much stay square pixels. Almost anything you work with now is going to be square pixels. Back in the days of HDV and DV video, you would have stretched pixel aspect ratios where they're trying to fit more uh, more information in on, on the, uh, formats such as a video tape like a HDV tape or a DV tape. And they would stretch pixels to make it look like it had a higher resolution. It's just kind of a little workaround. But pretty much everything you work with now is going to be square pixels. Now, if you know what sort of resolution you're working with you can set your resolution here you can actually pull down presets and tell it what sort of preset you want to do if you're working in 1920 by 1080 you can choose a basic 1920 HD uh, HDTV is a pretty standard here you can choose let's say we're working uh, 24 frames per second I'm going to select that notice it pops at 24 but a lot of cameras these days will shoot 23.976 which is uh, drop frame right now we're working a non-drop frame it's 24 frames per second straight across but if you're working in broadcast time and you understand drop frame 23.976 6 is pretty standard, which a lot of cameras shoot automatically without you knowing it. So this is going to be, if you're working with uh, DSLRs, if you're working with uh, Canon DSLRs or Sony cameras, a lot of them are going to be shooting 23.976 where people think they're 24 frames per second. If you don't understand drop frame, look it up. Uh, there's some big explanations on Wikipedia and some other locations. Some other items up here in setting up a new composition, and let me explain what a composition is. Composition is basically, if you're an editor or you've edited in, in something like Premiere or Avid or Final Cut, uh, it's essentially something like a timeline where you're going to be compiling item upon item upon item. You can do what's called a composite. It's basically going to combine many video clips in the same window at the same time. That's really what After Effects does well. Right here we've got a resolution. A resolution is what your video will play back at as a standard. This doesn't mean that your video quality is going to be brought down to this resolution. This doesn't mean that your resolution is going to be, that your video resolution is going to be lost ultimately or in the end, but this is just bringing down the resolution temporarily while you're working so it can speed up the process of compositing and playing back video and rendering video. Down here you can tell your time where you want your time code to start. This can get a little complex if you're working with specific clips where you need to match time code. If you're doing clips for like a feature or a short film and you need to match time code on the clip, you can uh, you can adjust. You can create a custom starting time code. And down here is going to be the duration of your timeline. This is remembering the duration from a previous clip I brought in. If you're shooting a 30 second commercial, you can type in 30 and period to fill in the and that's going to be 30 seconds. That, that right there, if I hit return, this will be, that'll essentially be 30 frames. This is 24 frames per second. So that equals one second and six frames. So that's a total of 30 frames if we're 24 frames per second, essentially. If you want a 30 second timeline here or a com uh, com composition, say we're doing a 30 second spot commercial, I'm going to type in 30 and hit a period. That's going to be 30 seconds. And the period is a placeholder for the two frames over here. And now I click away from that we've created a 30 second composition. And then your background color, whatever you want your color to be, to, your background color to be, black is pretty standard. And then we're gonna hit okay. Or you can actually name your composition up here. We'll call this 30 second spot, hit okay and it creates our composition. And down here is essentially your composition, or it's 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 like a timeline, if you're familiar with editing software, this is very much like a timeline. Uh, just a quick overview of After Effects here. Up here, let's I'm gonna grab this workspace up here and turn this back to standard. This was in motion tracking before, but I'm gonna pull this little workspace down and I'm going to hit standard. By default, this is the layout that you're going to have here. 
And what we've got is we've got our project window over here that contains all of your media and compositions. Very similar to something like Premiere where you've got a project area that contains all your timelines and media. Over here this will contain all your media and your compositions as well. You can do multiple compositions, you can do compositions within compositions. There's a whole bunch of things we could be going over. Down here is your timeline or your visual composition. Any composition that you create that is up here in your project window, you can double click on and it will load it down here. And if you have multiple compositions, let's create one more composition. This is your create a composition button. I'm going to click on that. Just do it the same settings here. We're going to name this 30 second spot number two. Hit OK. And we've got two compositions now. So and notice down here we've got tabs. We've got our first 30 second spot and our second 30 spot 30 second spot down here. If we close one of these, all we have to do is double click on it up in our project window and it opens it back up in a tab. So if we close both of these, we just double click, it opens it up, double click, and it opens it up. Up here is our visual composition area right here. Anything down here that's playing over any specific frame over here will display your image up here in this window. This is basically your monitor for your composition. And you have to be a little careful of what you're viewing up here because once in a while if you have a clip down, and we'll demonstrate this later on, if you have a clip down in here, if you double click on a clip, sometimes it will load it up in a clip viewer in a tab next to your composition. So you got to be aware that sometimes you're looking at your composition and sometimes you might be looking at an individual clip or a piece of media. And you'll see those opening up in tabs up here. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to bring in some JPEGs here, import some JPEGs. We're going to get into importing, but I'm going to drag one of these JPEGs into my 30 second composition here. So here's a JPEG that we've dragged into our timeline, and I'm going to grab another one and drag that over the top of this one. So we've got two of them. I'm going to hit my scale, S for scale, bring this up. I'm going to bring this size of this down so we can look at a couple different windows. We're going to get into compo compositing here in a little bit, but I just want to quickly demonstrate that if you double click, now we've got this layer in the background and this layer in the foreground. If we double click on one of these, Notice it opens it up at the layer level here. This basically it opens up this individual clip as a layer. Now we're no longer looking at our composition here. Down here we're looking at this individual file right there, that individual layer right there. And this is a video clip. You can play through it. It's not. It is a JPEG, so it's, we're not seeing any movement there. But now notice we've got these two tabs open. We've got a composition and we've got that layer level open. We can close this layer here if we want. You can hit on a Mac, it's Command W, or a PC, it's Control W. That's pretty standard for almost any program uh, to close a window is Control W or Command W on a Mac. Control W, close it, and there we go. Okay, and one thing that I brought up before was this little workspace. Let's kind of show what this workspace does here. This does different layouts for different types of work. With After Effects, you can do things like animation, effects, motion tracking, a whole bunch of different types of whole bunch of different types of functionality here. And if you're working in a specific area, like animation or like effects, and if you are doing some very specific work like animation or effects, you can pull this down and tell it to show animation, and it will rearrange the layout and it will optimize your workspace for animation. And what that will do is will give you this will give you a little bit more space down here, a little bit more timeline space here so you can do your animation and keyframing down here. And also bring up some little functions over here that work with animation like your wiggler or smoother. We pull this down, we do effects. This actually brings open our effect window over here, effects and presets, so we can search for different effects. Look for a warp stabilizer and I type in warp in the search window and it brings up all the the filters and it brings up open and it opens up all the effects that have the word warp in them. Pull this down and tell it to show motion tracking. Motion tracking. Motion tracking will open up our tracker on the side here, which gives us basically four different types of four different types of trackers over here. Our tra our camera tracking, tracking motion, warp stabilizer, and stabilized motion. And probably some of the more typical ones you're going to be using are animation, effects, motion tracking, and standard here. I'm going to go to standard. Of course, if you do text, it'll arrange this, optimize this for text where you have all these items over here for adding text to your composition. But I'm going to go to standard right now. Okay, let's get into show how compositions work quickly here. As I mentioned, I've created two compositions down here. Each one is 1920 by 1080. And if you want to double check that, you can actually go up into this area here into your project window and you can select any item in your project window. And up here at the top is going to show a quick little preview of your composition. And up here will show a little preview of the basic attributes of that specific clip or composition. Up here in the preview area, it says this is named 30 second spot. It shows 1920 by 1080, but the resolution that it is displaying live here is at 
one quarter as we set it up. And that's 480 by, by 270, so it's kind of low resolution, but this will speed things up. As we're playing clips back, this will speed things up. Okay, so let's quickly go over how how compositions work here and layers. I'm gonna import some footage. Actually, let's go up to the project window. When you select a clip here, or a composition, it's going to show its attributes right up here in this little preview window. It'll show a visual of the clip right now. I've got nothing in this, so it's blank. So you just see the black here. If you click on this, it'll show a thumbnail of the image, but it will show the name of the image, it will show the resolution, it will show the pixel aspect ratio, and if there's a frame rate, this is a JPEG, so it's not, it will show the frame rate down here. If we select a composition, you'll notice that. It shows the name of the clip, the resolution. Here's the displayed resolution, because we're playing back at one quarter of the resolution. But like I said, this is not degenerating the, the clip in the end, it's just bringing down this, uh, scaling down the resolution just to increase the speed of your system. This is your pixel aspect ratio right there, which is pretty standard at 1.0. And here you've got the duration of the clip, and here you've got the frame rate. So 23.976, virtually 24 frames per second drop frame. So let's bring in some footage, and we're going to start showing you how the composition works. If you want to bring in footage or media, uh, you can simply double click in this area, or Control I will import as well. Or you can click on a folder, and you can access your hard drives from here. If you're on a PC or a Mac, you can do the same thing. Go to your finder, and you can go to a certain location. You can go to the desktop here, and we can import. And we can import clips here. We can just grab clips, drag and drop them in from a folder. Or another way of doing this is double clicking in this area is the same thing as Control I, but it brings open this window here, and you can select the items that you want to import and it will bring them in. A uh, quick way of organizing things in here, if we want to organize all of our JPEGs into a folder here, this is your new folder I icon down here. This will create a new folder. Kind of a quick way of pulling a bunch of media into one single folder is you can select a range of clips here. I'm going to select this bottom, hold down shift and click on the top. It will select the whole range. That's very typical for uh, basic file navigation and selecting files. If you hold control or command on a Mac, you can select individual files. But once again, if you click the bottom, hold, then hold down shift and click on the top, it selects the range of clips. I'm going to grab these, I'm going to drag it down and hold it over the folder, let go, and it dropped all those items into the folder and it left the name highlighted so we can name this here. I'm going to call this stills. Now I've got some video footage here. I'm going to grab all my video footage, drag this down to the folder, drop it, and we'll call this video. So I put all my video into one folder, all my stills in the other, and you can organize this as much as you need. Then if you want to open these folders, you can double click on them or click on this little arrow right here to the left of the folder, or double clicking does it as well, will open and close. Then if you want to, we can put these compositions in a folder as well, and I'll just call this folder comps. Just to keep things organized and cleaned up so you're not getting terribly messy up here. So let's grab some footage here. I'm going to import some different footage. I'm going to delete these files here and grab some some shorter files here that we can work with. Here's some footage here, some MOV files I'm going to import. I'm going to drag those into my video folder. There we go. These files are all 1920 by 1080. These are Sony files, 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second drop frame. This one is 12 seconds long. I'm going to grab a different clip here. I'm going to grab a clip and I'm going to drag it down into my 30 second spot timeline there right here. I'm going to pull it down and hold it right over the top of my 30 second spot and you see this little plus symbol next to it and you let go and it will drop that clip down into my timeline. So here's the clip. Notice this, this whole timeline is 30 seconds long and notice my clip is less than 30 seconds long so it starts here at the beginning and ends here short of the of the entire timeline. I'm going to grab my playhead, put it in here. Let's quickly talk about navigation within your timeline or your composition here. Uh, you've got your playhead here that will display a very specific range. Let me, I'm going to pull this down and put it on auto. What this does here, this is changes the resolution. If it needs to dip the resolution to play back the, it's going to try to play back your timeline or your composition. It's going to try to play it back at the highest quality it can, but playing back real time as well. So sometimes if, if you can tell this to do the resolution that you want, or you can tell it to do auto. Auto is going to detect the speed that it needs to play back at in order to play this back at, at, at real time as much as possible. But what will happen is it will try to render the anything you drop in here, it's going to try to render it into the RAM of your computer uh, before it plays back. 
and you'll see a little render line happening as it does that. Once this is played back here, you will be able to play back your uh, video clip. You'll be able to play back your composition at real time. I'm going to hit my spacebar here, or zero on your numpad. The big zero on your numpad will render this timeline. And this is playing back. It's rendering pretty much full quality. Got a guy flipping the camera off there. Thinks he's funny. And notice it is playing back pretty much at real time. It even displays up here that it's playing back at real time. It's rendering this clip at real time because we haven't done a, a terribly complex composition here. So it is, now this has been rendered and this will play back at real time. If you start adding things to this timeline here, let's drag one on top here. I'm going to change the size of this. We will get into changing sizes and composition. Let's block this guy out. There we go. And now as we hit spacebar or zero, spacebar is play by the way, and if you hit zero, it'll render. This is still rendering back at real time. This computer has enough power to play back two video clips at the same time and render this real time to half resolution. Notice this is on auto right here, so it is playing back at half resolution and able to play this back at real time. As we add more clips, let's add another one. Let's try to tax our system a little bit. Move that up there. Let's hit zero. And it's still able to play back these three video clips all at the same time and render it real time. Then as we start adding effects, let's add a blur here. To a clip, blur this clip, and this is probably going to tax the system a bit. Hit zero, and actually still doing pretty good. So this has a pretty good video card. Right now this is using the video card, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But we've got all these layers here playing back, just so you know how, the, how this works. Now, let's talk about controls in your timeline here. As you press spacebar, and press spacebar again, it will play and pause. If you want to navigate through your timeline frame by frame, get used to not using the arrow keys, which you would normally use in Premiere Pro. If you want to go back a frame or forward a frame, it is actually the page up and page down. What the arrows will do will actually grab whatever layer you have selected is going to move it over one pixel at a time. Watch this if I hit arrow left. Notice this video up here is moving over one pixel at a time. That does not advance in your timeline there. I'm going to undo until I get my render back here. So you're going to do page up to move from a frame to the left and page down to move a frame to the right. So just get used to using spacebar for play and pause and use page up to advance to the previous frame, page down to advance to the next frame. And now if you hold down shift and page up, page down, it does 10 frames at a time. Shift, page down, 10 frames advancing, shift, page up, 10 frames previous. So spacebar, play and pause, page up, page down, and shift, page up, page down. So let's talk about layer hierarchy. As you go up to your project window, notice my project window is not showing here because I used an effect. We're going to get into that in a little bit. You can hit your little arrow here and tell it to show your project window. And here are, are the clips. As we grab our videos, we've dragged videos and dropped them in here. Let's delete these. And I'm going to grab a video and drop it down in my timeline. That brought the entire clip down into this timeline here. And the way you can get a clip into a timeline, by the way, is if you don't want the entire clip, you can actually double click on a video clip here. And this is very similar to Premiere where you can set an in point and out point. Say we want just where this guy enters the frame over here, or actually where he starts walking right there. We want to start there. I'm going to put I for end point, start right about there. And what I'm going to do is hit this little set end point to current time. I'm going to hit this little item down here to set your endpoint to the current time. Right there, we'll set an endpoint. I'm going to undo that, and the shortcut for that is Alt left bracket key. Alt right bracket key is the out point, is a shortcut for out point. It's not I and O like in Premiere. You're going to hit Alt left bracket key, sets the endpoint right there. And as I move forward here, I can either play, let's say we want our clip to stop right there before the camera stops. Alt, left bracket key, or you can select this little item right there, it will set your out point. So we've got an out point there, an in point there. And now you have uh, ripple insert edit and overlay edit. Overlay edit is going to be the most common here. You click that, it will drop that in and out point down into your timeline. I mean, let me grab this clip and move it over and show you. This little gray area here is the handle of that clip right there. It's not showing until it hits the end point right there. There's the end point. There's the out point, so the clip will disappear, and this is the rest of the clip that's not being shown because the out point is cut. And you can keep in mind you can only put one item on each layer. This item here, it's not like a timeline where you can drop clip 
after clip after clip. This clip here is its own layer. It's, they're basically layers is the way that works. So let's go to the beginning here. And by the way, to navigate to the beginning of your timeline, you can simply hit your home key, take you to the beginning, and we'll take you to the end of the timeline. I'm going to go to home. I'm going to press play. I'm on my space bar. The clip cuts in right there and it's going to cut out when it hits this point here. Let's forward and I press play and boom, it cuts out. Let's grab a JPEG here. I'm going to just grab a JPEG. I'm going to double click on it and I don't need to set an in point and out point on this thing here because it's a JPEG. So I can simply grab this JPEG, drag it down into my composition, and I can either notice where this black line is, I can put it underneath the video clip or hold it up and it will drop it on top of the video clip. I'm going to drop it underneath right now. And there's a very large, uh, this is a 5K image right here. So if I select this image here, I can simply come up here to the image, right click on it, and I can say under transform, we can tell it to fit to the comp here. If you fit to the comp, it'll scale it down so the whole thing fits within the composition there. But right now we're seeing our JPEG. Notice that this one is turned off because we've reached the out point. If we move this back here, notice all of a sudden that video pops up over the top of this JPEG. And let's kind of show the hierarchy here. Whatever is on top, this video clip is on top. So that means the JPEG is right below it. This has been this uh, this video clip here has been laid on top of the JPEG. If we simply select this layer, come up and grab it and move it, you'll see underneath there is the JPEG underneath this clip here. I'm going to undo that, put it back where it was, and let me grab one other JPEG here, and I'm going to put this underneath this JPEG right there. And actually, I'm going to turn these two off right here. I'm going to select these two here. I'm going to hit, hold down Shift and select both of these layers here. I'm going to go over this eyeball and click on the eyeball and it will turn those two layers off. So now we can see this third layer behind. So these ones have been turned off. So now I can select this JPEG, right click, go to transform, and I'm going to say fit to comp. And the shortcut for that is Control Alt F. If you have a layer selected, hold down Control or, or on a Mac, Command Alt or Option F. Command Option F or on a PC, Control Alt F. And it will fit that kind of, that image, that large image to this 1920 by 1080 timeline. I'm going to actually turn my audio off on this layer because I'm not using audio. But I'm going to, now I can turn these two back on. I'm going to select these two, hit the eyeball, it turns them back on. So now let's show kind of this hierarchy here. We've got a video clip. I'm going to move this to the side and there's a JPEG below it. I'm going to select this JPEG, move this one, and there's a JPEG below that. So we have this one on top, so we have this video clip on top, we have this JPEG below that, and then another JPEG below that. And as we play through this, these two aren't moving here. Watch this. It is showing these two JPEGs here, and then this will cut to that point right there. Now we see the video clip, and as it reaches the end here, this video clip will disappear. And there's the out point, and it cuts, and we see the JPEGs below. So that's kind of how hierarchy works in the timeline. Anything that's on top will show first, but uh, you can decide to turn it on or off at certain points in your timeline, in your composition, by having endpoints and out points. Let's show how to display attributes for each individual layer. Down here we've got our video and we've got our two JPEGs. And you've got this little arrow to the left of these items right here. If you click on this arrow, it will open up this little menu here. And you have some attributes underneath. You've got an audio and a transform. And each one of the, this is native, the transform is going to be this kind of native inherent uh, function for every single item that you drop into this timeline here. We got the transform, I'm going to arrow this down and it will show very specific items here that can be keyframed or manipulated. You have anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity which are inherent to every single clip or every single piece of media that you drop in here unless it's audio. So right here you've got an anchor point which is usually the center point of the resolution of that clip. 1920 by 1080 uh, divide those in two and you get kind of the center point as your anchor point. And what an anchor point is, let me demonstrate that really quick, is this little item right there. And if you change your anchor point, that's going to change where your rotation occurs, where your scale occurs, and how your, your scale will happen from this point out. Your rotation, let's hit the rotation which is W and show you this rotates around this anchor point right there. If we change that anchor point, here's your anchor point tool. It's called pan behind tool or your anchor point tool. Click on this, go out here and grab this and move it up to this corner here, right about there. Now I'm going to hit W for rotate and now look how this rotates around that anchor point. And if you scale, it will scale off of that based off that anchor point right there. So that's how the anchor point works. I'm going to undo and notice as I change that anchor point, Let's click on our anchor point tool and move this. Look how the numbers change 
on the anchor point. Now your position is where that your image is located on screen based on that anchor point. Uh, this is going to be the center of your, of your clip basically right there. So as we change this, it's going to change your position down here. So we just grab this and move it, it changes your position, but the anchor point is exact on that clip right there. Uh, is on the exact. So this is showing where your anchor point is, uh, what exact pixel it is on, on this image right here. And then this is where it's located on your 1920 by 1080 screen here or whatever resolution you're working. So when you change your anchor point, you'll notice it is changing both position and anchor point because your position is based on this anchor point, showing where the location of your anchor point is on your composition and on the clip. You've got your scale here. And by the way, you can change these attributes either by grabbing these wireframes up here. I'm going to hit V for my regular arrow tool. That's V as in Victor. I'm going to come down here to my scale. And you can click on these things. Click, hold, and drag left and right, and it will change the attributes. Notice how this is scaling based on this anchor point right there. I'm going to right click on my anchor point and I'm going to reset the values there so it puts it back in the center. There it is back in the center. I'm going to right click on my position and reset that to the standard position which is right in the middle. And there's my scale there. If we go 100% on this or you can just click on this scale right there. Just click on it and enter in the field on your numpad. 100. Zero, zero, hit enter or return and it goes back to 100 there. Rotation. As we keep rotating 360 degrees, it adds a one times here, and it will keep doing it more because if you're animating, you might want this to rotate several times. And right click on that, reset. The opacity is how see through this is here, the, the percentage of your opacity. Right now it's 100% op opaque, so you cannot see through this video. If you grab this and drag it to the left, notice it turns transparent. Right there's a 50% opac opacity. And we move this, notice it is now transparent. And actually, I'm going to reset all my transform right here. Just hit this little reset button right there, and it resets all of my attributes for that specific clip. All right, a couple of little other basic things here as far as the composition is concerned are manipulating endpoints and outpoints. First of all, we've got an endpoint here. We've got an outpoint here that we've set. But if you want to change those, you want to change an endpoint and outpoint, what you can do, even if you could bring in a clip that you haven't done any in and out points on them yet, let's, let's actually bring in another, a new video clip and show you this. I'm going to grab another video clip here drag and drop it in on the top layer. So that's the top layer there. So it's got the entire clip here. Entire clip from beginning to, from end point to out point. Very, kind of a short one, about a 20 second, about a 15 second actually clip there. But here with this video on top, let's say we want to start this video where this big schmuck here is not in the shot there, looking at the camera. So we're gonna move this over right to there and that's where we want the shot to start. A couple things that you can do here is you can simply move over and grab the end point and just slide it over to the playhead here. Now if you want it to lock to that playhead as you're grabbing this and moving it, you can hold down shift and it will go, it'll kind of magnetize there. See how it clicks and goes click and clicks right to that point right there, to the playhead right there. I'm gonna undo that and show you the shortcut for that. The shortcut is kind of the same as up in the footage window where you hold down Alt or Option on a Mac, Alt and left bracket key will set your endpoint right there. Then you move along, say after he walks away, you want to do an out point right there. Alt, right bracket key will set your out point. Now kind of a cool way of moving your clip here, I'm going to move down the timeline to these other clips here. Notice that this clip is now invisible at this point because my out point is right there. Say you want to grab this clip and move, you can simply grab this and just move it down like this if you want it to show up at a different time part of the timeline. I'm going to hold down shift and once again locks the out point to the playhead. I'm going to undo that. And a little bit better way of doing that, say I want to move my out point right here to here. Not I want to shift the entire clip over, I don't want to change my out point to this point. I want to grab this out point and move the entire clip over like this. The way you can do that is just simple right bracket. Brings the out point to your playhead. Now if I move down here and you want to bring the in point here to my playhead, left bracket. Remember Alt or Option left and right brackets will change your in point and just your left and right bracket will move your in point or out point to those to your playhead position. Some other things we've got here is this little um, this little source name function right here. This really isn't a function. This is just d deciding what to show down here. If you decide to change your names of your layers down here, uh, you can simply click on uh, select a clip and press return or press enter, and it will highlight it ready to rename it. And we can name this. Let's see which one this one. This was outside. I'm going to just rename that outside. So I'm going to select the layer, hit enter, and say outside. 
So I renamed that layer. I'm going to select the top one, which was the hallway, hit enter, and name it hallway. Especially when you get manipulating a ton of different layers in here, it's going to be helpful to name these and remember what is what. I'm going to call this one apartment. It's the apartment JPEG. Got to learn to spell. And then this other one, let me turn this one off and see what, and it was actually this guy's face below him, so I'm just going to call this one return face. So we renamed all those. Now if you ever need to know what these were originally called, what clips they are referencing here, you can actually click on your layer name and it will change it, it will toggle it to source name. Now it's no longer the layer name that you were showing before, now it's showing the source names of these clips, what the name of the original clips were. Uh, and you can change this back to layer name, just click on it and it toggles between layer name and source name. Now as you start working with multiple layers, uh, sometimes you don't you want to hide a, a, a large section of layers. Doesn't mean you're going to hide them up here, you want to still see them in the composite, but you don't want them down here to, to get everything all just messed, messed up where there's just a ton of stuff up here. So say we want to hide a few things, say we just want to work with this face one right here and um, I'm going to, and I want to hide these ones here. I'm not hiding the layers in my composition, I'm, I'm not hiding those layers up here in the visual composition. I want to hide them in the timeline so I'm just not seeing these names here. And that's what this little shy guy item is here. If these are check marked here, you got this little shy guy icon turned on, that means these layers, when you click this toggle button right here, will hide all the layers that have the shy guy icon on them. So this is used to hide specific layers here. Notice when we click on one of these, it has the face go behind the wall and it is, this guy is now hiding. So if you want to hide several layers here, you can select, let's say these three layers I want to hide because I want to just see this face one right now. I'm going to click, I mean I'll select all these, click on this, and it hides all those. They're not hidden yet, but that just means they're ready to be hidden. These ones will be hidden when you hit this toggle key up here. Now with those ones hiding, we can click this and notice they disappear. The layers are still there. They're still visually showing in the composition. It's just not displaying them down here. So if we want to bring those back, you just simply click this shy guy face here and it brings back these. And it brings back these ones that were once hidden. And that really get, that's really helpful when you get into some points where you have a whole ton of layers and you just and you just don't want to have a big mess of, of layers up here. That can get some sometimes it can get quite complex. Another thing I want to show is this basic toggle switches and modes right here. Uh, a few things, we'll be going over some of these later on. you got things like motion blur and uh, frame blending and some other items up here. And uh, over here you've got parenting, so once you make attributes for one clip, you can parent one clip to another clip's attributes, and we'll be getting to that later on. So down here, and you've got a pick whip function for that, and you also have a drop down menu to tell it what layer to parent to. And one way of parenting one clip to the next is just simply by grabbing this pick whip and doing that and dragging it to another clip. Now this is parented to the face attributes. We'll get into that layer later. I had none on there, but this toggle modes and switches here. Once you click that, it'll bring up a whole different range of options right here on your composite, on your composition. And notice this brings up, instead of uh, switches, these are your switches here and these are your modes. Switches are things like, like we mentioned, turning the shy guy on and off, frame blending, uh, motion blur, a whole bunch of other things. And as we go to modes, these are what are called blend modes. These are a way of uh, compositing one clip into the next in different fashions, and we'll get into these later on, blending one layer with the next. And you can kind of experiment with some of these things and see what you get. Uh, there's any things that, that there, there are some of these functions that will blend highlights, and some of these will, will blend the darks, and some of these will blend things based on color and a whole bunch of different other functions here. So I'm just going to put that on normal. Normal just makes it show full image. And moving on down the line here, you got track mat. There other ways to track a mat that you created on one clip and uh, add it to another clip and we'll get into that as well. And then you also have the parenting here function here as well. But that's under your toggle switches and modes. It brings up your switches and your modes. But under your switches here we have frame blending which if you're changing speed you want to make it look like it's kind of a natural if you're slowing things down or speeding things up you want to make it look natural you can use frame blending you got motion blur if things are moving if you're doing animation in fast motion you'll want to add motion blur to an item uh, to make it look natural you have the after you have the adjustment layer switch here that will if you add an adjustment layer you can tell what Tell what, tell what clips to be affected by the adjustment layer, and then a 3D layer. This will turn whatever items you select down here into 3D objects within a 3D camera space to be affected by a 3D camera, which we'll be getting into in a later episode. One thing you'll notice here, uh, we'll get in, like I said, we'll get into this in a future episode, but one thing I want you to notice is you bring down your attributes for your transform here, and you go into position, notice you have X and Y, X 
and Y coordinates on your position. As you change those, it changes your coordinates on your X axis and your Y axis. What happens when you check mark this as a 3D camera object, you'll notice one thing here. It has added a Z axis. This is taking it further away and closer to the camera. It's generated. This basically creates it a 3D object in a, in a 3D camera space. And uh, I do have some episodes specifically relating to the 3D camera function. I'm going to turn that off there and the Z axis is now gone. So just one interesting thing with uh, with the one of the switches here of turning this into a 3D camera object. Uh, some general preferences that you might want to go over here. I'll go over some basics. Go under Edit and Preferences. On a Mac, you're going to go under the Adobe After Effects, pull down and find preferences there. But on the PC, it's under Edit and Preferences. I'm going to hit General here and show some preferences that you might want to go through and adjust. Some things to kind of speed things up here. I usually like the default spatial interpolation to linear. So that just uh, makes uh, spatial interpolation. We'll get into that a little bit talking about that. But if you check mark that to linear, it's going to speed up the function a little bit. The linear interpolation is a little bit faster faster than making things on a curve. We'll talk about that later on, but you might want to check mark that depending on how advanced you're getting as well. But this is kind of, this is kind of something that speeds things up a little bit. Under previews, you'll want to go under your GPU information and make sure that your ray tracing is turned to the GPU and not the CPU. What the GPU is is basically your graphics card as opposed to your CPU, which is your computer processor. This is using the processor on the graphics card. And a lot of new computers with the nice beefed up uh, graphics cards, this will, if you, the better graphics card you have, uh, the quicker your, the, the quicker this will basically process. It'll process the, um, this is something that's, that's happened in After Effects and Premiere in the last several years as they've started using, taking access to these really nice video cards to do the processing as opposed to the computer processor. Uh, but one thing you might, I just usually check mark this by default as well. Enable untested, unsupported GPU just in case your card isn't supported, fully supported by After Effects, oftentimes it will still use it, especially if it's an NVIDIA card or a GeForce or a GeForce card or an ATI card. You can use you can check mark this and it will use your card despite whether or not it's fully supported by Adobe. And if it is unsupported, you might have some issues, but usually it seems to do pretty well on even unsupported cards. Gonna hit OK. And then also under display, if you go under display, you'll notice this little hardware hardware accelerate composition layer and footage panels. This will work here only if you have multiprocessors in your computer. It'll recognize that and you'll be able to check mark that and we'll use multiple processors to accelerate your composition layer and footage panels. So uh, those are a few things that you can do to kind of speed things up a little bit. Also under memory, if you go under memory, you'll be able to change the amount of memory that uh, is reserved for other applications. And the, if the, the less you have for other applications that will reserve it will give more memory to After Effects while you're working on that. So for some reason this usually leaves about six gig of uh, memory for other applications. But if you want to, you can change this. And notice as you change this, it changes the number reserved for After Effects. I'm going to take that down to six there, and that will give quite a bit to After of RAM available for After Effects there. And it also helps if other programs are shut down. So After Effects is hog is taking pretty much all of this RAM memory, and it will it'll it will will significantly speed things up. And those are some things you can go through to optimize your system and help things run a little bit faster and better in After Effects. All right, let's get into some basics here. Let's get into things, let's get into Mac creation, first of all. So we've got on top of our file here, we've got this hallway uh, file right here. And notice, whenever you select a file, Okay, so a couple other things I want to show here. Now let's start getting into how to manipulate files that are added into your composition here. So any file that you select here, first of all, will bring up a wireframe around that specific file. Select the hallway here. You'll see this kind of uh, kind of faint wireframe around this clip. Let me move it around and show you. And you see these nodes around the corner. See this wireframe. Once it moves off of your visual composition here into kind of the nether regions of where it's not sh where it's not displaying, uh, you'll have this wireframe, and you'll also have these nodes come around the corner. You basically have access with these little visual nodes to every function that you see under your transform here. If we arrow this down and show your transform, you have access up here visually. Instead of changing it numerically, you can come up here and you'll have kind of this visual graphic, uh, graphical representation of these features right up here. And the way that works basically, first of all, anchor point. If you want to change anchor point, you use the anchor point tool, which is right up here. The shortcut for it is Y. So right now we are on the arrow tool or the selection tool, uh, which is V. But if you hit Y, it chooses your anchor point tool. And now you can grab this anchor point and reposition it to wherever you want to on your image. You can even set it outside the image if you wish. But right there, we set the anchor point. So now it will rotate and scale around that point. I'm going to undo that. 
position. The way you change position is with your arrow tool, your selection tool, which is V as in Victor. And now you can simply just grab this thing, this image, and move it around. You can change its X position, you can ch change its Y position. And when you add a 3D camera, you can actually change with another little feature, you can change its Z position, which is not on here because this is not a 3D object right now. Scale. Scale you can change by grabbing any one of these nodes here, these little corner nodes. And once you grab one of these, you start moving your image. And notice if I kind of move it down, it makes it squish. If you move it up, it makes it tall. And you can scale it up and make it larger. And now, it, notice this. As you grab one of these nodes and you start moving, if you hold shift while you're doing that, it'll constrain the proportions and keep them proportional. It'll keep the, uh, keep the aspect ratio proper. And right now I'm holding, so right now I'm holding down shift and it constrains those proportions. So there's your scale. That's how you can change your scale. Rotation. You can use your rotation tool up here or hit W for rotation tool. And now you can simply move to any part of this image here. Click and drag and it will rotate it left or right. And I guess I kind of lied when I said there was no pass a way to change the opacity up here. There really isn't a way to change the opacity. You just have to simply grab your opacity and turn it up or down. But basically, these positional tools here are all operated on the graphical interface up here without using the numerical versions. And notice when I change those here, the changes are reflected in the numerical values of the clip. I'm going to reset this, transform back to normal. Let's go through masks. Now there's a difference, slight difference between what we call masks and mats. Mask is basically what you're deciding to cut out of a specific clip. The mask is inherent to the actual clip itself. You add a mask to it and it will cut out a certain portion of the clip. And if you and a mat actually uses another object to create a mask. So a mat is an object that you use to create a mask. Uh, like let's let's show the difference here. I'm gonna go up and create these tools right up here. You got your little square rectangle tool and you got your pen tool. These items here are either to create shapes, either a new layer that is a shape, or they also work as masks if you have a layer selected. Right now, so let's deselect all my layers here. I'm gonna click down in the blank area to de deselect. By the way, a shortcut for deselecting is Control Shift A will deselect everything. Control A selects everything. Control Shift A deselects everything. With everything deselected, I'm going to go up here. I'm going to use the pen tool. Uh, we're going to create just a little shape here, kind of a little star shape. I'm just going to click, click, click. And every time you click, I'm going to make this little kind of weird amorphous shape here. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a Canadian leaf. But I created a shape here that looks like this weird ship or I don't know what that is. Anyway, but uh, so right down here you notice that we've got a shape layer. Let me select my arrow and now you can grab this and move it around. We've got this little shape object right here. And now if we want to use this as a mat, the mat will create a mask on a specific layer by going down here to hallway. We're going to toggle our switches and modes and we'll get into more detail on this later, but I just want to show the difference between a mat and a mask. And we're going to use this shape layer as a mat to create a mask on this hallway layer. On this track mat, I'm going to select this and tell it to use the shape layer above it as either a luma mat or an alpha mat. I'm going to tell it to use the shape layer as an alpha mat. It'll generate an alpha mat and decide to leave. This video now is using this as borrowing the shape layer to create a mask for that shape layer. Now if we grab this shape layer and actually move it, notice how it reveals a different portion of the image. And that is a mat there. We can create what's called an animated or a travel mat. We can animate this later and go and shoot it across the screen and it will decide what portion of the image to show. Now if we grab the hallway, we move this around. Notice it moves around behind the mask or behind the, the, behind the mat there. Uh, so that is a mat, not a mask. I'm going to get rid of that shape layer and that's no longer there. I'm going to go down here and turn my track mat to no track mat and then delete the shape layer. And now let's show you a mask. I'm going to go up here and grab my pen tool and start clicking and doing the same sort of amorphous shape here. There we go. And we created, this looks the same. It looks like it creates a another mat here, but this is now added on to this layer here. But now watch what happens as we move this. As we grab this here and we move it, this moves the entire object and it is leaving the rest of the object alone. It's just cut out a portion of that object, of that uh, video clip. And now as we move this around, it doesn't move behind it and the mask doesn't move in front of it. This thing is basically this independent cutout shape now. As we play this, you'll see the video clip 
the tripod panning, but that is that portion of that video clip there. And we can move that around. So that is the difference between a mask and a mat. A mask is put onto the actual object itself, and a mat is an object made separately, independent from the the actual layer, and the layer is utilizing that that mat to create a what's called a travel mat or a travel or, or, or a mask. So important difference there between mat and masks. And now let's talk a little bit about alpha alpha channels. Alpha channel is what is decided to leave out of a video clip. And what you're going to do is with an alpha channel here, you're going to see we're basically canceling out this video clip here. This video clip is actually square, but it's deciding not to show this portion here, and it generates what's called an alpha channel. And that's the alpha channel is what it decides to take out of that video clip by creating a mask there. Let's turn off these other layers down below and show you an alpha channel here. Turn those off, and let's go over to this here and click on Toggle Transparency Grid. This basically shows you in the background black here. Instead of black, it replaces it with these little gray squares. This is your alpha channel. This is what it's deciding not to show of your video clip is out here in the squares. And also you can see alpha channels. There's another way of displaying alpha channels. Let's turn that off by going to our little RGB composite here. This is uh, channel and color management settings. Right now it's showing RGB of this channel right here, which is your red channel, your green channel, your blue channel. Essentially it is showing everything out of the image. You can tell it to show specific channels or you can tell it to show alpha. We're going to talk about alpha right now. There's our alpha channel. What the alpha channel do, does is it puts in white what is being left, left visible on a video clip and puts in black what is being taken out. So this is going to come in, help, this is going to come in handy with uh, future tutorials. We're going to show how to use alpha channel uh, where we're showing how to use a black and white alpha channel versus a transparency grid. So there's a few different things where, in which this will be, be applicable. Now if we select our layer there and we arrow down, notice a mask layer or a mask uh, section has been added to this clip because we have now generated a mask. We can arrow this down and you will see the, the single mask that's been created on that file. It's adding it to the shot. It's adding that mask to the shot. If you tell it to subtract, basically shows what's outside as opposed to inside. There's add. And we can arrow this down and it will have mask attributes. You can change the mask shape. You can change the mask shape simply by coming up here and grabbing nodes and changing the shape. Uh, you have a mask feather. You click and drag this to the right and you'll see that it feathers outward. If you drag it to the, it basically feathers outward. You can tell the mask expansion here to eat the mask inward. So you have a mask feather that softens the edges and you have mask expansion outward and mask expansion inward by going into negative. And then you also have a, a mask opacity which turns down the opacity of that entire mask to zero or 100%. So we turn these items on below it and we start turning down the mask opacity. We will see through it to the objects beneath it. I'm going to delete that mask. I'm going to highlight masks and delete and it's gone. All right, so a couple quick things to refresh here. I'm going to bring in some footage. I'm going to double click in this blank area and import some footage. Here's a couple clips I'm going to bring in right here. I navigate. I'm going to bring in a bunch. Of, I'm going to bring in some movie files here. I'm holding down Control. It'd be Command on a Mac to select individual files and hit import. I've brought these in here. And one thing I kind of want to refresh here is showing the preview area right here, the 1920 by 1080. We showed you how to create a new composition by clicking on this uh, Create New Composition item down here, this little icon, or you can go up to Composition and do New Composition under the drop down menu or control N does it as well. If you do that, you have these options to do your own custom settings for a timeline, how long you want the timeline to be, uh, what frame rate, what uh, resolution, what pixel aspect ratio, and all that. But the, kind of a quick way of creating a timeline and the settings for a timeline. If you want the timeline to match the settings of the clips that you're working with, say we're working mainly in 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second drop frame. And also one other thing that shows up here in the preview area is that, uh, if it has a recognizable codec, it will show up right here at the very bottom. This is Apple ProRes 4 to two LT files. If I grab one of these files now and you can actually drag it and hold it over the composition button and let go and it will generate a timeline that matches those clips settings. In fact a few things down here that you'll notice is first of all this clip is about this clip down here is only a few seconds long so the timeline is only a few seconds long but now this timeline here or the, sorry I keep saying timeline
timeline, this composition here will show the settings here that match the clip. This is set up a composition automatically by simply grabbing that clip and dragging it over the composition button. It has set this up at 1920 by 1080 and it's a 1.0 pixel aspect ratio and 23.976 frame rate. So it matched the basic settings of that clip there. But keep in mind that this also has set the clip, this has also set the composition duration at the same duration of the clip. If, we, if you want to change that now, that's a good way to kind of set up a composition really quick, but you can right click on it and go to composition settings and we can change the duration down here. Notice uh, it, it is only, oh, this is like two seconds and 15 frames. So say we're working in a 30 second spot, I can go 30 seconds and zero frames. Hit OK and it makes the composition longer. This is a little zoom tool down here to look at your composition. If you grab this and slide it back and forth, right now it's zoomed up. I'm going to zoom it all the way out and we can see now we've got a full 30 second timeline with that two second clip in here. One attribute that this uh, composition also took on from that clip, let's take a look under composition settings, is time code. This clip has a very specific time code from the camera, and look at here. It starts this time code at the exact same time code as the clip. If you want the time, if you want the time code of the, if you want the composition time code to be different, you can just highlight all this, hit zero, and hit OK, and now it will reset the time code. It, the time code of the composition is no longer based on that clip time code. The clip has its individual time code, but now the time, but now the composition has its own time code starting at zero and ending at 30. And one other thing I want to show with compositions, let me grab this new composition right here. We're going to, I'm going to call this Western, Western Comp. So it's its own composition. I'm going to drag that into its own, com into the folder up here with compositions. I'm going to organize my footage and throw this into my video folder. This is all a big shared folder. So you might want to organize your folders depending on how, um, <laughs> how large your project is. Let's go into compositions here. I've got my 30 second spot number two, my western comp, and a 30 second spot number one here. Under the 30 second spot, just a regular 30 second spot, I've done a little bit of, of a composite here. Have some video layers upon video layers that cut in. Uh, let's do something so we can kind of see all these individual video layers. Let's change the, I'm going to change the scale on these. I'm going to select the, I'm going to select the outside shot and make the smaller. I'm going to hit scale. S for scale brings uh, open the scale attributes here and I'm going to scale this down so we can see all these video clips playing at once. And let's scale down the hallway, hit S on the hallway and scale this down. And I'm actually just going to move this over here. So I have a whole bunch of video windows playing at once and some still images. So there we go. Okay, so here's our composition. These video clips are cutting in and rendering. There we go. Now, let's say we're going to work on this uh, Western clip here. Let's drop one more video clip in and make our own little video composite here as well. Just going to drop this to this. Grab one of these and drop it in here. There we have a couple video clips in here. It cuts from one video to the next. So now we've got this Western comp and we've got this 30 second comp here. Uh, what you can do is you can treat compositions as if they are clips. So I'm going to grab this 30 second spot and drag and drop it down below. So I've got this composition within a composition, and it looks like it's a clip here, but it's a composition within a composition. Watch what happens as it plays through this commercial. It'll cut to this, and boom, we've got this composition inside acting as a single clip. All the attributes and everything are combined into this as if it is one clip. So now you can actually, let's, let's scale this entire composition. So you can go down the corner and grab this and move it. And it treats this whole composition as if it is one clip. I'm holding down shift as I'm constraining proportions. So let's move back here, make this thing smaller. Move this video back a little ways at the beginning. Scale these down so we can see. So we've got these clips going here. And below it, you see the composition playing right here as if it's one video clip. And now you can treat this instead of scaling all those individual video windows to get um, one at a time to get this sort of scaled image here, you can scale it as if it's just one clip. It's a composition within a composition. It's like a compositionception or something. That was a great joke. Uh, but I'm going to go to 30 second spot, double click on it, and it will open up the original composition. Now you can do changes. Watch this. If I make a change in this composition, put that down here, and go back to the Western comp, notice it has reflected the change here. This is referencing this 30 second spot composition live. So it's updating in the Western comp. So kind of a cool feature. This is a very powerful feature with After Effects where you can treat a bunch of clips as, uh, like a group or an individual clip. And that's about it with this tutorial. I've got one other little thing with organization here. If you want to rename folders, you can ba basically highlight them and hit return and type in the new name. If you want to uh, pull things out of a folder here, you can simply grab things 
a couple of, let's grab a couple of these video clips. And the way you get them out of folders is just grab the items that you want out of the folder and drag them to the left until that little stop symbol disappears right there and let go. Just drag them a little bit to the left and drop them. Now they are out of that folder. You can drag these and put them in a new folder now. I'll call this stuff. There you go. And those are some of the basics. And part two of this episode is going to be on what I call the six parameters of After Effects. That's basically compositions, layers, animation, effects, 3D, and rendering. And once you get to know those, you're going to have a pretty good grasp of After Effects. And that's what we're going to go over in the next episode is the six parameters of After Effects.